Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, which books should be in the Bible? There are really two different sets of books that are majorly cited as the right sets to be in the Bible. The Protestant collection of 66 books and the Catholic canon of 73. We'll be going through a lot of the reasons that are used to defend the 66 book canon to see how those reasons fare. There's a claim that the Jews at a council in Jamnia in 90 AD explicitly rejected the seven books that the Catholic Church includes, the Deuterocanonical books, which I'll be referring to as the DC. However, this claim isn't very strongly supported by the evidence, as the current belief is that the Jewish canon wasn't established until almost A.D. 200. There are claims that early church fathers rejected some of these books, but the only evidence of this comes from the writings of the first century Jewish writers Josephus and Philo, who also didn't accept those books as part of the canon. Probably the most supported claim in support of the 66 book canon is that it's a translation from the Masoretic text, the Hebrew canon of the scriptures. However, the Masoretic text didn't come into existence until sometime between 600 and 900 AD, among Jews who'd already rejected Jesus. The Greek Septuagint, an Old Testament translation which contains the DC books, is older and was being used even during the writing of the New Testament for quotes and references. Not only that, but it continued to be used as a primary reference work by Christians until at least the 5th century. One common claim among Protestantism is that even though the Masoretic text itself didn't exist at the time of Jesus, nevertheless, they had decided on an official collection of holy books and that that collection was recognized as complete during the time of Jesus. This is quite impossible for a couple of major reasons. First, because the New Testament itself recounts how even among the chief priests of Israel at the time of Jesus, there was division about which books to believe in. For the Sadducees say, there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Acts 23.8 Now some people have said that just because they hold different views on this issue, that doesn't mean they have different canons of holy books. After all, the Bible doesn't specifically say that the Sadducees only accepted the law of Moses. That understanding of the Sadducees is only explicitly found in other historical sources apart from the Bible. Well, the problem is that if the Sadducees really accepted all the same books as the ones in the Masoretic text, they would also need to accept this verse from Daniel. And many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some unto life everlasting, and others under approach to see it always. Daniel 12, 2. Clearly, that doesn't jive with the claim that the Sadducees say there is no resurrection. So even in the Bible, we see clear evidence that the Sadducees didn't accept the same books as the Pharisees, and therefore that the Old Testament books weren't a settled matter. However, there's also a good reason why the Pharisees, who did accept all of those books, also wouldn't have claimed to have a finished collection. You see, after the first five books, many of the other writings of the Old Testament, specifically the writings of the prophets, contain strong and severe condemnations of things that were being done in Israel. And the only reason why the Israelite people saved writings like those was because they recognized that those same writings also contained prophecies of the Messiah, clues about the coming Savior who would do for them what Moses did, rescue them from bondage. At the time of Jesus, the Jews were still not completely independent. They were under Roman rule and were still looking forward to the coming of the Messiah with no real idea when he would come. So it wouldn't make any sense for the Pharisees to conclude, well, that's enough books. God won't send us any more messianic prophecies ever again. No, sir. So, there is no good reason to think Old Testament canon was fully established in the time of Jesus, which means that the first established authoritative canons were over a century later, after the ascension of Jesus, when the first Christian scripture canons were compiled and used. Those canons are identical to the ones used in the Septuagint, the Vulgate, and in the modern Catholic Church. The Masoretic text is a latecomer by comparison. In short, it looks like 73 is the right number of books for the Bible to have. Next, is it wrong to ever call a human being father? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.